it. He is highlight worthy. Oh my goodness! What a- There's nothing quite like a wrestler hitting a powerful move on someone who really knows how to sell. Whether it's due to their flexibility and athleticism, or their facial expressions and cries of agony, or Devon Dudley's weird leg spasm thing that he did, a wrestler's ability to sell makes the matches so much better. Here are the best sellers in WWE history, starting with Spike Dudley. Spike Dudley sold everything like he'd been hit by a cannonball. And fair enough, as the poor guy was only 150 pounds in an era where the average wrestler was at least 230 pounds. Undersized, Spike would always play the underdog, but more often than not, he played another role. The role of getting the tar beaten out of him. Seriously, every single thing that ever happened to Spike Dudley looked like it damn near killed him. He made other wrestlers look great, but it's a modern day miracle that he walked away from the business intact. Dolph Ziggler. Superplex! Rolls through! Looking for the Falcon Arrow! Take it! Fans clamored around Dolph Ziggler for years as his smooth, buttery movements made him an internet darling very early on. WWE saw those smooth moves and thought, man, how good is he going to look taking everyone else's moves? And that became Ziggler's role. Sure, he's a former world champion, two times even, but those title reigns were so rapidly forgotten by WWE and the fans. Ziggler's legacy is that of a man who looked great when getting the crap kicked out of him and a useful tool to elevate other wrestlers. Love you, Ziggler. Mick Foley. Oh, no. 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 Mankind, Cactus Jack, Dude Love, even Mick Foley himself. All four versions of Mick in the WWE were gluttons for punishment. All four took horrendous chair shots, and the majority of them took brutal bumps off of cages, into thumbtacks, through tables, and sometimes on the exposed floor. Like many on this list, sometimes it's hard to remember any of Foley's offense because what really stands out are the brutal bumps that he would regularly take. Seriously, name a Foley move other than Mr. Socko or the double arm DDT. Better yet, just watch these couple of clips of him getting thrashed. Nick Foley! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Brock Lesnar's first run. Big show! Slam to the steel chair! Don't get me wrong, Brock Lesnar from 2012 to now has a wonderful ability to sell. It's just we rarely see it, as he's usually absolutely destroying whoever he's in the ring with. In his initial run from 2002 to 2004, Brock still destroyed most people he fought, but he also sold like an absolute champion. The difference was Brock wasn't already a superstar and hadn't had an incredibly successful UFC run just yet, so they treated him like a wrestler who could be beaten, potentially. When it came time to go against other main event stars like Goldberg, The Undertaker, Kurt Angle, or The Big Show, Brock made them look a hundred times better than they already did. Check out the air he gets on this Undertaker chokeslam. The Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels. The Heartbreak Kid stole all of the ladies' hearts in the mid-90s with his dashing good looks, but he stole all of the men's hearts with his ability to look like he'd been seriously injured in any given match. Sean was a bumping machine, the original Dolph Ziggler, and as the smallest man in 90s WWE, it was his job to show how big and strong everyone else was. How did he do that? By making it look like he had no chance against giants like Psycho Sid and behemoths like Vader. Upon returning to WWE in 2002, the average wrestler's size had gone down, but Sean's ability to sell had not. He then took that ability and brought it to amazing matches with the likes of Chris Benoit and Rob Van Dam before eventually using it to make the careers of the likes of Randy Orton. Evan Bourne. Oh man! Cold breaker! Oh. Knees to the face! 
If you weren't watching when Evan Bourne was on WWE TV, you may not have heard of him. He's not a wrestling legend like the majority on this list, but man oh man was he awesome in the ring. A true cruiserweight, Bourne could jump and flip with the best of them. He was light on his feet, acrobatic as hell, and innovative with his moveset. Bourne is perhaps best remembered for being on the receiving end of Randy Orton's RKO after going for his shooting star press. There have been tons of talents over the years who can jump and flip, so it's a shame that this super talented star gets lost in the haze. Ricochet. But I guarantee it's highlight worthy. Oh my goodness, what a collision! Of all the smaller wrestlers who jump and flip and take bumps like it's nobody's business, Ricochet may be the most talented we've ever seen. The man's movements are so smooth, he's precise, and he looks like he's got control over gravity in a way no other human has. Ricochet has a great moveset full of jumping and flipping, but he's on this list because of his ability to make everyone who beats him look so good. Ricochet can take an average move like a DDT and make it look like he'll never fully recover. When he takes a finisher, you feel like he'll never stand up again. Ricochet makes other wrestlers look amazing, so hopefully he sticks around for the long haul with WWE. Jeff Hardy. The ladder, Raven Newer fans might not realize this as Hardy was starting to slow down in his last WWE run, but in the early 2000s, there was no one that could sell like Jeff Hardy. A lot of his moves employ self-imposed risk like the Whisper in the Wind or his finisher, the Swanton Bomb. But when Hardy isn't out to hurt himself, his opponents are there to make sure the job gets done. Teams like the APA and the Dudley Boys has their careers made by the likes of Jeff Hardy taking their moves. With single stars like John Morrison, Umaga, and CM Punk, Punk having their stars shine with Jeff selling in the late 2000s. Rob Van Dam. What a counter. Rob Van Dam sold like Ricochet, but wasn't quite as small. He also had some of the best kicks in the business, but we're not here to talk about his offense. Let's look at RVD absolutely make his career by selling for The Undertaker, Randy Orton, Chris Benoit, and so many more main eventers. Though RVD only held the world title once, his career was forever solidified by being able to make any wrestler he went up against look amazing. His awesome leg flexibility combined with how he took bumps were unique at the time, making countless regular moves, signature moves, and finishing moves look better than they had any right to. Even when he had delivered his own finisher, the five-star frog splash, he sold it like it took a lot out of him afterwards. The Rock. People these days know The Rock for being a famous movie star, and wrestling fans fondly remember his ability to cut amazing promos. If you don't remember those two, it's likely his finisher combination of The Rock Bottom and The People's Elbow that stands out. But true wrestling fans will remember The Rock's ability to make any other wrestler's move look super damaging. And how did he do that? He sold the hell out of them. Everyone remembers The Rock's over-the-top selling of the Stone Cold Stunner, but what about Rhino's gore? The Undertaker's last ride, Kurt Angle's angle slam, and so many more. Every time The Rock got hit, you felt it because he made it look great. Just one of the many talents that this man has. That concludes our list of the best sellers in WWE history. Who did we miss? Let us know in the comments below.